Let's look at the next topic, metaphors about culture. Culture is like onion and iceberg. ในหัวข้อนี้นะคะเราจะมาดูถึงการเปรียบเทียบวัฒนธรรมว่าเหมือนกับอะไรบ้างอย่างแรกค่ะ the first one culture is like an onion เปรียบวัฒนธรรมว่าเหมือนกับหัวหอม The onion model of culture shows how culture has a number of layers. There are a number of interpretations of this model, but the simplest one consists of four key layers. The outer layers represent cultural artifacts or symbols such as flags, architecture, or traditional clothing. Heroes make up the next layer, such as Winston Churchill in the UK. And tend to represent many of the culture's values and beliefs. The next layer is composed of common rituals and traditions. This could include how people greet each other, eat meals, get married, or practice their religion. In the center of the onion are the underlying values and cultural assumptions. Which influence all of the other layers. These beliefs, norms, and attitudes are much harder to recognize without a deeper analysis and thorough understanding of each of these layers and how they interact. To make it clear, let me explain in short and give more example of each layer. Onion. It is made of three layers around the core. The core stands for the values of a certain culture, which is not moving a lot. It mostly remains the same, even if something seems to be outdated. It still can some consciously play a role in the present, that includes individuals as well as groups. The first layer around the core. Is described as rituals. A ritual can be the way of personal hygiene. Most Asians shower in the evening. Europeans in the morning. German people like to shake hands often. Malay tenderly touch the fingertips and then point it to the heart. Those rituals are changing slowly. The second layer around the core are the heroes. A hero can be a fictive person, but has influence on the culture. A nice example is Dracula, written by Bram Stoker, published in 1897. Since this book was published, many people in Western world develop a fear about vampires. Even if it never existed in their culture before, it also can be national heroes, photo models, or scientists, or people who play a role model in that society. The third layer is about the symbols. Nowadays, most symbols appear as brands like BMW, Apple, or Louis Vuitton. The symbols usually move according to the momentary fashion. All three layers can be trained and learned through practices, except for the core, the inner cultural values, like good versus bad, dirty versus clean, ugly versus beautiful, unnatural. Versus natural, abnormal versus normal, paradoxical versus logical, irritational versus rational. 
Culture is like an iceberg. เปรียบวัฒนธรรมเหมือนภูเขาน้ำแข็งนะคะ Culture is often compared to an iceberg, which has both visible or on the surface and invisible or below the surface part. Now let's start with the top 10% of the culture iceberg. When you first interact with a new culture, maybe through travel or other experiences, this is the part of culture that is immediately evident to you. This is the part you can see, taste, smell, hear, and touch. It includes things like food. Music, visual arts, language, celebrations, and games. These things matter. The visible aspects of culture are important parts of how cultures interact and maintain their sense of unity. However, they also tend to be fluid. Receipts and games and arts can all change over time. Even language shifts with each generation. Therefore, we can say that the cultural facets of the top 10% of the culture iceberg have a relatively low emotional load. They matter to people, but they can also be changed and altered without fundamentally challenging the existence of a culture. Or people's idea about who they are. Next, a larger aspect, which is hidden beneath the surface or below the water. These parts of culture are those which are related to, or cause those parts which you can see, such as beliefs, values, motivations, worldviews. Gender roles, etiquette, social or family rules, importance of time, concepts of selves, and many more. These patterns of thought underlie the behaviors which can physically be seen. And the example of the deeper features of cultural include facial expressions. Religious beliefs, religious rituals, importance of time, values, literature, child raising beliefs, and the ideas about the planets and so on. In his book Beyond Culture, Edward T. Hall developed the iceberg analogy of culture. The cultural iceberg theory suggests that, like an iceberg. There are only some aspects of culture which are visible, or which, in other words, lie above the surface of the water. These can include language, food, greetings, art, music, and many others. These are the explicit manifestations of culture. They are easy to see, taste. Or hear, but according to Hall's theory, these are only the tip of the iceberg. The majority of culture, like an iceberg, lies beneath the surface. These aspects are not immediately visible. They can include worldview, religion, spiritual beliefs, decision-making models, power relationships, respect for authority, concepts of time. And many others. These are the implicit manifestations of culture. They can exert an important influence over behavior, values, feelings, and thoughts. The more immersed we become in a cultural environment, the more these hidden aspects are revealed to us. To sum up, elements of culture which we can plainly see 
such as food or clothes, are represented by the upper portion of the iceberg. Those elements which are not as obvious, such as why someone eats or dresses the way they do, are represented by the much larger portion of the iceberg underwater. The cultural iceberg is split up into two different segments, observable and not observable. The observable segment is above the water because it's something that's visual, like behavior or practice. It could be the clothes you wear or the music you listen to. Not observable is below the water because it's much more subtle, like your attitude towards something or your core values, good and bad, acceptable or unacceptable. Something that may be polite in one culture, like shaking hands or making eye contact, could be very impolite in the other. The cultural onion is a circular display of culture. The outermost rings represent things that are less important, while the innermost ring is the most important piece of our culture. The outermost ring is symbols. Things or icons that we feel represent us. One inside of that is heroes. Heroes are the people that inspire us to do what we do or be how we are. The second innermost ring is rituals. Things we perform on a daily basis or often enough that they become a piece of our lifestyle. And the core of the cultural onion is values. Our values are the rules or guidelines that we live our lives by to show what's really important, or what is important to us at least. Our symbols, heroes, and rituals are shown through practices that we perform. Our values are far more subtle and don't reach the surface as much, but they're always there. In this slide, I'm supposed to say which one I believe is more true, the cultural iceberg or the cultural onion. Really, neither one is more true than the other. They describe the same thing, just in a different manner. Both are true and are a good commentary on culture, although if I had to pick, I'd say that the cultural iceberg is explained more smoothly. But that doesn't make one more true than the other. In conclusion, these two metaphors of culture, the onion metaphor highlights that culture consists of different layers and has a call made of values, while the iceberg metaphor highlights that many aspects of culture are not immediately visible.